Welcome back to Creative Perspectives. I'm Brandy, a transitional life coach specializing in mindful and healthy connections. Today, my topic is going to be about sexual dysfunction, illnesses, and anything that can actually plague your sex life. So you're in for a treat today. Also, I would like to take a moment to say thank you so much for your likes, your shares, your subscriptions, and for your overall support. Please take a moment to subscribe if you have not subscribed and to hit the notification bell to receive instant notifications for my future shows. Okay? I am so excited. I have been waiting to do this series and it's a lot, <laughs> which is a good thing. Now we are going to start off because once we start talking about sexual dysfunction, trust me, it's going to, you're in for a ride. Okay? I am going to do some questions. How do you get closure? Hmm. Okay. If we're talking about relationships when it comes to healthy and mindful connections, the best thing you could do, depending on the respect level of your partner, because remember, everybody has a different connection. Some people have respectful uh, partners who are excellent communicators, and other people, they are struggling with it, um, or there's immature factors. There are um, some people, they do not want to conform in a relationship to make it healthier. They just want to have someone there. Um, in my past videos, I talk about um, how some people, they want you on their puppet strings. Okay, and if you allow that to happen, and that could be psychologically um, done, mentally, spiritually, and sometimes even physically done, which I hope you call the cops if that's the problem. <laughs> you know, we don't want you in those types of relationships, okay? Um, but anyway... Getting closure is pretty much being realistic about who that person is to you, who you are to them, what the actual issues were that um, is causing you to come to a uh, state of closure. Um, some people are willing to offer closure and other people, they're just not. They're not going to do it for you. Um, some people just don't have that respect. Some people, they might have a little bitterness to them. Some people are just petty. And that pettiness, they just want to, you know, get that last bit of um, injury to try to injure you by um, causing further harm uh, and not giving you the closure, okay? Um, everybody has their own reasons for how they end situations. Uh, some people, they're, they might think uh, they don't want to see you hurt. You know, that's another factor to it. And some people, they want to hurt you, so they don't want to give you closure. And some people, they want to be able to return back and keep that little, keep you on the uh, cycle like a hamster wheel, <laughs> a hamster wheel cycle, <laughs> you know, where they can run in and out of your life. But if you want to get closure and you want to shut down all of the old issues that you have so you can move forward to something better, because remember, when one door closes, another one opens, okay? So... There's something better for you, you know, and I know there, if you, if you have went through a situation where um, no closure was offered, please leave it down in the comments so people can see how you dealt with it. The way I've dealt with it, if I was not offered closure, first I just had to realize, you know, what was the nature of the situation and does it really, do you really need closure? If it's something where you desire closure, and the other person is not willing to um, partner with you to get that closure, then the only thing you can do is first be realistic, start healing from it. If that healing process means that you have to go see a psychologist, a psychiatrist, a counselor, um, talk to a friend, a family member that you trust that will not abuse their uh, position in your life mentally, emotionally, emotionally or spiritually, and um, they are really genuinely for your best interest, do it, go for it. After you have healed from the situation, you have to give it closure, okay? Some people don't wanna offer you closure because you their position in your life may not bend to uplift and make you a stronger person or for to offer support in your life. Some people are takers and that's all they want. They're all about the I team. They're not about having a team. <laughs> they just want anybody that can fill that void of a team. Some people use biblical scriptures to manipulate uh, the interpretation that God has for a man and a woman to come together to connect because there's both parties have a part, but some people just want to dominate and conquer. 
And we, you know, if you've been in that situation, closure may not be offered when you leave it. <laughs> okay? So, the best way to do your closure is give it to yourself. Uh, literally. Give it to yourself and understand you are still worthy of, who, you know, who you are. You're worthy, you know, in your life. And you are a wonderful human being. Now, if you see certain things in your life that you need to fix, um, and, and the way there was an experiment I did when I was in college, and we had to go around asking five people who knew us well, what are five ups, what are five things they love about us, and then what are five things they think we can improve, you know, in. I would suggest do that experiment because sometimes we don't see ourselves, okay? So it takes for other people to um, fill us in for us to get to know ourselves, okay? And it depends on your maturity level. Some people feel they could talk to you, and then if you are one of those people where they cannot talk to, some people will leave and not offer you closure. Okay, so again, if you are not offered closure, heal, be realistic, understand that you are still valuable as a person, and that there are better doors opening for you. Remember, whenever God shuts a door down, <laughs> He's preparing you for a better door. It's just up to you to leave the old door shut no. so you can move to the new door that's waiting for you, okay? But you want to make sure you're healthy when you're ready to enter into the door, which is going to give you the opportunity of a good love. Yeah. Don't let anybody just come into your life because that will destroy you. Um, you have to keep your standards and if you don't have standards you need to build them up. And the best way to do that is understand what you like and what you don't like. Okay? And you need to stand firm when someone crosses the boundary of what you do not like. And you need to voice that immediately. Not wait 10, 15 months later <laughs> to voice it. Say it up front. If they show you they will show you who they are. So if they don't change the behavior, you're not important enough for them to try, then honey, you got your answer. Leave that door shut and heal and make sure you position yourself for the next time to be healthy enough to enter into a relationship yeah. in that new door that God's got waiting for you <laughs> so you can partner with the right person, okay? And take your time. Be patient. Don't rush. Sometimes when you rush into relationships, you won't get what you... Uh, which you may not be looking for. Okay, we're done with that question. The next one is, what is the deal breaker in a relationship? Okay, so when we're talking about deal breakers in relationships, again, you have to know what your standards are, okay? You set your own standards, your own deal breakers on what you will and will not take and what you will and will not tolerate in that relationship. And it's up to you to, um, you know, make sure you're respectful towards your part towards uh, your partner or you are demanding respect from or not really demanding respect just some people are not respectful <laughs> and some people are depending on how they were raised and what type of help they got uh, or they received to correct some of the behaviors that show a lack of respect for other people just some people unfortunately they are disrespectful they do not have respect and uh, some people don't value men, some people don't value women. And if you run into one of those folks, um, just learn to identify and vacate the premises. <laughs> okay? But in order to figure out what your deal breaker is, you need to know yourself really well and just know what you are, what your standards are. Okay, and you don't need to argue and act like you need to train anyone on your strength standards. You just let them know, hey, I didn't feel that was okay. I'm not comfortable with that. And then see what they say and or do. If they fix the behavior, you're looking at somebody that's a potential keeper. Just don't rush because some people, they will revert back to their old behavior once they feel that they got you if they're not in it for the right reasons. So your standards is going to dictate your deal breaker. Uh, compatibility is another issue. Your uprearing is another issue. So if you are coming from a two-parent household and you meet someone who wasn't, um, really get to know them and see if you know you're, you have the same values in the areas that are most important to you. Okay. So uh, 
So that's it. I'm compatibility, the communication styles, uh, your love language. I always love to talk about love languages because um, if you don't know love, the five love languages, um, I would recommend you read that book. <laughs> okay, um, so you can understand how people show their love. Okay, and what type of love they love to receive. Some people are gift givers. Some people are, um, they need words of affirmation. Uh, it, it, you know, just read that, okay? And, uh, okay, so we went over communication. We went over learning love languages. Um, let's see. Attachment styles is something you also want to look into learning. What is your attachment style? Because only you know how you were raised you know what is happening on the inside of you mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, okay? And you know what you're running away from or what you're trying to run towards, okay? And you know what you fixed in your life and you know what you have, you need to work on, okay? So if you're the type where you're really needy, let's figure out why you're needy and let's start breaking those chains, okay? Because we want you to have those healthy relationships and connections, okay? So deal breakers could be, if you don't like cheating, that's something you need to set up front, uh, your your uh, sex life, that's another thing too um, that I think people need to be talking about which we're going to tackle today. Okay? Because you have to be compatible in those areas. Compatibility in finances, how uh, uprearing your children, your religious factors. Some of this stuff does not have to be deal breakers, but you need to talk about to see what, what where you are and where they stand in it and see if it's something you can work with or something you want to run from <laughs> okay because <laughs> there's always somebody else out there for you so let's not invest too much in people that um, may not be the best fit for our lives okay because why you're wasting time with the person that's wrong or that you're struggling with because you guys are clearly not meant to be in a connection you're letting the people that you really need to uh learn about um go off to someone else so anyway okay 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 this is a tough one what causes a person to cheat oh that's a loaded question <laughs> okay um i'm gonna put that to the side people cheat for many reasons um i've learned that some people cheat because they keep trying to talk to their partner about sex or their partner is just uh their ego is so high their pride is so high um, that or they just don't value their partner because some, you do have men that are married or they are in long-term relationships where there are womanizers and some of that stuff is covert until you either get married or until you have children with them so some people hold on to the good parts of the relationship and the presentation of looking like they're good until they're not so <laughs> uh, just I am a big fan of uh, there's uh, military uh, complacency kills okay so you always want to be on your toes and um, you know and trust is built and earned okay so make people earn you honey but uh, let me see what so what causes them to cheat there could be so many different factors that could cause them to cheat some people are just innate cheaters okay some people have been traumatized in their life so where they don't have respect for uh, men or women in general, so they may not value sex. Uh, some people may have some traumas that they dealt with, whether they were sexually abused before or a long time ago, or whether they were psychologically destroyed or um, beat down five feet when they were younger. So they're bringing that rhetoric into the situation, and it, you know, so <laughs> cheating can definitely play a part with different um, types of backgrounds. <laughs> so, um, uh, if you withhold your body, that's another thing. So that's why I'm big on talk to your partner. If you are unsatisfied with your sex life, talk, speak, and um, but do it out of love and, and genuine concern. And always tell your partner how much you love them, how much you value them, what they bring to the table. So they so you could try to disarm them as fast as possible and as much as possible so you could keep talking about something that they may be uncomfortable about especially when it comes to sex because if you are unwilling to change unwilling to work with your partner sexually especially if you're going to be together because work is heavy when you have a family like children that's another job when you have your actual job 
then when you come home, you, you know, uh, you want your the dynamics in your home to be a, a strong, solid foundation. If it is not, you are allowing the devil to walk into your home and into your situation to start chatting in your ear, you know, chatting, you know, and if you allow that to happen, cheating can take place. So I would just say, be honest with your partner. If there's anything that needs to be fixed that you would like to see done differently, um, do not have high expectations for them because remember they are an individual and so are you. And cheating may be um, uh, something if they feel undervalued, if uh, if you're you've been cheating because I've I've met a quite a, quite a few people who have talked to me about their situation when it came to cheating, and pretty much they were serial cheaters. And as soon as their partner went and did the same thing they did, now they they directed all of the blame on their partners when it really was genuinely they ruined the relationship but they just don't want to take any form of ownership to in that situation so you want to cheating is a big thing so i've left never looked back um you know and it ha happened in my first and my second marriage unfortunately so i'm big on i'll pack my bags and i do not tolerate that crap so um but the cause can be many factors also stress distance disconnect in your communication you know you always want to communicate and keep it keep that part solid you know <laughs> and if you don't know how to communicate go take some classes they have online classes they have that you know different educational platforms you know you can do youtube all kinds of different things you can go see a counselor on um, how to strengthen your communication with each other and i think communication is number one also uh figure out where your partner's head is you know and then also try to minimize the stress around the house because we are all we all have something going on but we don't want our stress to overtake everything else because there's so much beauty that we could be missing out on if we focus too much on that okay i'm done with that question okay so how will you know if someone is really into you and not just looking for sex First of all, if somebody is just looking for sex, you'll know right away because they're trying to do every trick in the book to try to get you in their bed. From suggesting, let's go watch a movie. If you don't know them, nah. <laughs> they, they should be dis decent enough. I'm about courtship, so make sure they court you. If they're unwilling to court you and take you um, on basic dates, especially as adults, you know, <laughs> then um, they're just not ready for a relationship. So don't let them force or impose their own uh, uh, lack onto you. Have them court you and go slow. Let them ask you a thousand questions. You ask them a thousand questions. Meet people they know. Be safe. Okay, that's another thing. Just be, fit, be safe. And if they are really not willing to get to know you as a person, they're not that into you. They just, they're looking for you as a, a sexual commodity, <laughs> okay? If you like investments, sexual commodity. So you want to avoid them like the plague. A real person, man or woman that comes into your life, if they see you as somebody that might be a possible potential for to have a future with, they'll take their time. Some people are not looking for relationships too, so you have to be aware of that. Some people are just looking for, you know, a, a good time, so... <laughs> The way to avoid that is look at if they're trying to rush, okay? So if they're trying to go out with you every single day, you got to slow it down, you know, um, because real people who are healthy, they don't rush that fast, literally, they don't. Um, now, I've met some people where they met the love of their life the first time, but those are rarities, sweetheart. Those are not <laughs> something where we're all finding what we need right away and working our way through that. So... Um, a real person will take their time they'll go at your pace so if you're uncomfortable and they're still trying to impose their way and you have voiced how uncomfortable you are and they're trying to convince you that your discomfort is not needed but you are uncomfortable and they're not respecting that part that tells you who that person is they are not there for the right reason so 
they're there to use you. If somebody's asking you for money right away, hopefully you'll never have somebody like that. <laughs> Uh, tell them to wait until they have their financial house in order in order to try to date you. Okay, if they're coming at you cheap, like I don't do this for this person, whether it's male or female, I don't do this and this and this and this, but mostly male, you know, I'm old school. I'm 42 years old, so I'm old school on courtship. So I believe the male should provide in those situations. And then as you guys get to know each other, then you can uh, start integrating to um, take them out on dates and stuff like that. But I don't think as a woman you should be doing that right away. I think you'll be shortchanging yourself. The way I see uh, relationships is, okay, if somebody is trying to have sex with you, okay, that person's benefiting. <laughs> You're not. They want you to pay for your own meal, why they pay for their own meal, but they want you to lay down and have sex with them. Now, and if you are going to uh, agree to that, because you guys are on the same page to just make it a sexual relationship and that's it. That's one thing. But if you are looking for something more and you have voiced it and the person's still trying to press you, they're uh, trying to guilt trip you, guilt trip you, make you feel irrational, bad about your decision to withhold yourself, um, that's not the right person. So I hope I answered that. Just make sure they court you. Courtship takes money. <laughs> if they don't have money to court you, adios amigos. <laughs> Albadachi. Get rid of them because they're not ready. I, I, you know, if they're not ready, if they don't have the financial means, they're not ready. And you don't want somebody bringing you down more because you're not there to be a mother. You are there to be a partner. Okay? I'm done with that question. Now we are going to go ahead and dive into our topic of sexual dysfunction. Our first sexual disorder is going to be sexual desire disorder. Okay? That's when a man can have a hypoactive drive where they lack fantasy. Okay? Same thing with women. They lack fantasy because if you know anything about sex, sex starts in the mind. <laughs> and it goes from the mind to your physical being, okay? The lack of desire can also be um, due to if you suffer from different things like depression, um, anxiety, those type of issues. Um, if you have low testosterone uh, from taking depressants or you have lots of marital issues that's causing you to stay in a stressed state that can also cause it. Let's move on to our second one, uh, sexual arousal disorder. Um, that just means like for women, they cannot um, get, have, get lubricated. Sometimes that could be hormonal. Um, as we age, our body changes. Um, that's not always the case. Sometimes if you've had a previous surgery, that can also do it to you. Um, also, uh, for males, for the sexual arousal disorder, it's impotence. Impotence is just when you can't maintain an erection during the whole duration of sex. Now, I'm not talking about people, because I've, <laughs> I've listened to some people where they could go an hour or more. We're not talking about that. We're talking about, you know, basic 20 minutes, 15 minutes to 20 minutes. You know, if you got to stretch it out, maybe a half hour. So it's just not your inability to maintain an erection during the whole duration of sex. That's reasonable because <laughs> some people need more time. Okay. All right. So hormones uh, can uh, play a factor. Okay. Now we have an orgasm disorder. For women, it's your inability to have an orgasm. So even though you can enjoy sex, you may not have reached that highest peak, okay, that God has made us to have when we are enjoying our husbands. Um, and if you are not married, I guess you're long-term partners, okay? For men, it's premature ejaculation, okay? So that just means like they can't maintain without, um, uh, ejaculating and some of that can be from being anxious 
Uh, you know, whenever you meet a new partner or you're trying to impress someone, sometimes you're just overly anxious during that moment and you're like, oh my God, uh, I, you're just trying to impress so much to where you're not relaxed enough to be able to um, have, you know, uh, sex. So you come prematurely and then also early sexual trauma can also be a big factor in pre-ejaculation. Okay, and sometimes our parents have, you know, taught us, you know, especially in my age group, sex is bad, you gotta wait till you get married, and then da 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 and then they try to do everything when you're a teenager to deter you from even liking or deciding whether or not you want to have sex, okay? So it's what has been planted in your head about sex. So if you think sex is bad, then uh, that could be, play a factor with that disorder. Paraphilic disorders. Pedophilia, that's when um, people have sexual urges towards children. Okay, normally 14 years old and under, and then once they get past that stage, they no longer have that towards them, but this is just for your knowledge only, okay? And this is entertainment purposes only. On my channel, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nurse, okay? These are things that you can discuss, look up yourself, and talk to your doctor or your provider to um, gain more information and learn more about it directly. Okay. Exhibitionism, that ex that's when a person exposes their genitals uh, to others, to strangers, and they get their sexual aroused by doing that. Voyeurism, that's when people take pleasure in uh, watching other people. You know, they have a desire to watch others. Okay. Sadism. A lot of this is due to childhood abuse, but that is um, where they want you to beat them. Then you have uh, mochism. They like to be ab abused or dominated. Then you got fetishism. People who have sexual desires or non-living things, okay? So a man might want to uh, take your panties or a woman might like to smell your underwear or some, anything, but what it does, it gives them sexual pleasure. So the men, they can be heterosexual, but that, that's what gives them pleasure, okay? Or makes them have a sexual arousal, okay? It's by wearing women's clothes, okay? And I've seen that. There was a Lifetime movie. Um, I forgot what it was called. Um, an officer... It was an officer who was killing women and raping women, but he would wear their panties, you know, and put their panties on, and then he had a panty stash, and then he had videos of his crimes. So that's an example. Another paraphilic disorder is fraudulism. That's when a male likes to uh, put his um, genitalia, he's dressed in clothes, but he likes to rub himself against uh, women. Zoophilia. Some people get aroused by animals. Um, carpophilia, it combines sex and um, defecation. Uh, urophilia, that's sex with the urination. We heard of way back in the day when I was a kid, like, you know, we know him, he's now in prison, but he was a famous R&B singer. Necrophilia, that's um, sex with uh, dead bodies. Hypoxiphilia, that's, um, they choke and masturbate at the same time. So genital pelvic pain disorder for women. So that's when they just have pain uh, before, during, or after sex. And that's psychological in nature. And then you have a penetration disorder. And that's when um, the uh, vagina kind of contracts and restricts to where a man can't get all of his penis um, in. The illnesses. So we all know strokes, cancer, heart disease, uh, uh, diabetes, uh, let's see, fibroids, um, which are non-cancerous uh, uh, tumors. Then we have, uh, you know, hysterectomies, colostomy bags, you know, people who have to wear those. Then we have, um, let's see, Surgeries, you know, different types of surgeries, different types of cancers. I believe I said cancer already, lung disease. Um, if you have mental health issues like PTSD, you suffer de from depression, um, uh, you have different anxiety disorders, schizophrenia, um, multiple sclerosis, um, epilepsy, 
uh, spinal cord injuries, irritable, irritable, sorry, bowel syndrome, back pain, lung disease. Okay, um, let's see what else we have. Then you have um, body image issues, extreme stress. When you're stressed out, those are all things that can neg negatively impact your uh, sex life. Okay, um, past traumas, obviously, you know, um, people who have suffered trauma through um, rape or child molestation. Okay, and then also how you were talked to about sex when you were younger. So if sex was deemed as negative, demonic, that type of deal, then that's uh, something that can um, definitely cause emotional and psychological issues when it comes to how you feel and what you think about sex. All right, I think I have, I uh, said everything that I possibly can, a stroke, you know, different types of surgeries, the medications, your hormones, your age, uh, I went through everything, okay? So we have things that affect our libido, and this is for both male, men and women, okay? Now we are done with that, thank you. So if you have any issues that you need to discuss, please go see your gynecologist, your doctor, an actual professional who can dive deep. So don't try to, uh, what do you call that, um, self-diagnose. <laughs> Because they have their own ways of providing treatment, of providing testing that works. I actually was looking up, um, they said something about, um, so if you're impotent, hold on, let me see if I can find something. Hold on. I wrote that one term down. I took lots of notes. So, Okay, it's called uh, shockwave therapy. So it's for people who are impotent, suffering from impotence, and it's uh, a way to not do pills, and it's, uh, it does not harm. So it's called shockwave. So if you have a partner who has uh, sexual dysfunction, erectile dys dysfunction, um, they are coming out with newer ways and healthier ways. And then I've listened to some of the doctor channels, and um, I, Dr. Eric, I believe is his name, and he speaks about natural ways to bring your sex back, um, your uh, sexual dysfunction, and he lays it out. I love how he he says, I think it's called um, Dr. Eric Berg, and um, he uh, tries to promote natural ways of healing. Now we're gonna move on to some things that you could do in the bed that can definitely help increase your sex life if you are struggling. One is you can spend more time on your foreplay. Sometimes there's not enough foreplay. And if you have non-compatible sexual techniques, that can also um, harm your sex life. Uh, try to do more holding, caressing, um, hugging, romancing, you know, just things to bring the spice back, okay? Um, we want to avoid boredom because sometimes boredom can also cause a person to not perform, okay? Because it's the same stuff all the time. So it's like, it's like if I, if I force you to watch the same movie for years, <laughs> at some point in time, you're gonna get tired of that movie. Whether it's five years from now or whether it's a year from now or whether it is a month or a day, okay? So boredom, okay, having unreal, unrealistic expectations about your age, you know, uh, your ability to perform that could cause you to become depressed as well. So we want to make sure we're doing appro appropriate um, behaviors when we are aging. And you can still have fun when you're older and having sex, okay? Let's see. Once the honeymoon uh, period is done, a lot of people start changing up that sex. Try to keep it spicy. Keep it new. Remember, if you are married, you're in it for a long time. You're, you're in it for the long road, hopefully, okay? I've been divorced twice, and I do not um, regret any of it. Like, leaving, nope, don't regret it under any circumstances. Always happy, you know? <laughs> so, um, but if you are in it for long road and you have the correct partner, somebody who shows you respect, because I was not respected, and, um, you know, I was young. I got married at 19, and... It was a, a trauma bond from a rape when, that happened when I was 17. And uh, 
my first husband, he was there during that time, but we should have never been married, okay? And then I suffered because I made the choice to marry. And um, we'll, we'll discuss that some other time. But um, just make sure you have realistic expectations. Um, performance anxiety is another major killer of sex. <laughs> so when you meet somebody, the intensity, this fear of not being able to pleasure them can play a big factor. So we want you to remain relaxed, okay? Um, alcohol plays a big factor um, in your sex. So if you need to cut it out, get rid of it, reduce it, do whatever it takes, you know? Also, if you have uh, hormonal issues, if you have testosterone issues, that is something, another factor that can also plague your sex life. So, if you know that you have a sexual dysfunction, the best thing to do is go get, get seen. You know, um, don't think the worst, okay? Our healthcare providers are there to help us. You also have sexual um, STDs, too, that you have to be careful of. So, you also want to um, stay abreast of what's new, what's happening in the market, and that. Keep yourself protected. Um, at all times <laughs> as much as possible all right um, and they have a lot of new uh, things that can help with sexual performance in general so I think I tried to brush over everything I have like three pages of notes I'm so thankful I got through all of those I may have mispronounced a couple. <laughs> so but that's okay I'm definitely not a doctor I just want you to understand these are the disorders because um, we want to not try to kill our partners if they can't perform correctly or if they're, if they're having a problem performing. And that's for men and women. Depression plays a big factor. Having a busy life, that plays a factor. And those are things that you can definitely connect with your partner and try to um, figure out what you need to do so you guys can maintain a healthy sex life, okay? And don't beat and badger each other. <laughs> um, and don't use um, toxic words and behaviors. Um, to um, get your point across to your partner let them know how frustrated you are okay because that's so unhealthy and it's not going to help anything if anything it will drive them further away our next love series is going to be on on understanding how your past affects your future and how you can gain clarity from your past so you can be prepared for your future God bless you God smile on you. Thank you. Please take a moment to like, share, subscribe, or comment. And I hope you enjoyed today's show. I can't wait to see you again. I am growing and I'm so thankful that you are here with me for the ride.